All right. Hello, everyone. It's like so five. I'm in VR. I know it's been a while. It's great to see you. Um, I've got a special tutorial today. We are working on a new app. Well, it's not my app. It's a um, Gabe and his team at PolySketch are building this cool app called PolySketch. You're going to find it in your library when you're searching. I see you go to the store uh, to install this and it is in App Lab. So I think if you go apps and then we search for PolySketch, go get it. It's free. Um, there is one in-app purchase. I did purchase it. I'll show you why in a second. You don't have to. Definitely not required to use this, but um, anyway, super duper cool app as you can see here. And it's for 3D modeling. My hope, <laughs> though there's no real evidence to support this, is that in September at Connect, they launch bringing 3D model imports into Horizon. And this tutorial proves valuable because we'll all be skilled and learned. Um, and I'm actually building a world uh, using PolySketch models in Horizon. And I really hope they, ac they open that access to all of you guys uh, in September. But anyhow, this is fun. It's 3D modeling in VR, which I love and I haven't been able to do in so long. So this has been a just kind of pleasure to get back into VR and keep creating. So let's go ahead and open the app. And here we are inside of PolySketch. And I love that little model there. At some point, I'll build something like that. I want to work on some uh, floating islands myself, actually, for the world I'm working on. But here is the menu inside the app. You can see I've got three sketches already. If you don't buy the add-on, you only get three save files. I paid the $9.99 to get additional save files. And so I can have, I don't know how many, probably infinite. Um, although I imagine there's a limit when you reach the capacity of your headset, I guess like a million, maybe you probably hit 2 million. Um, genuinely though, these files are pretty small. So I don't think there's going to be, you're not going to hit a limit. So anyway, we're opening one up. I didn't mean to, but here's some rocks I'm building for a new world called Lava Trials. Um, and I'm moving around already. So to move around, similar to Horizon, grab with both grip buttons, and then you can pull yourself around. You can't do a single grip. You have to pull your both grips. I do hope that that is something that's added in the future. I love moving in Horizon with a single grip and then being able to throw myself across the world. So it is a little bit to get used to moving like this. There isn't a preview mode to be able to like go down there and walk amongst your models. I hope that's a feature they add in the future. And that's another thing to just quickly note. This app is still very much in development. So um, with that, we're going to open up our menu button, which I believe is just pressing down on the thumbstick. Sorry about my daughter there. And <laughs> sorry, she is very vocal today. Um, when you press down on your thumbstick, that's going to open and close this menu. I think is maybe the, oh, the three bar icon. There we go. And then we're going to go click save and exit. And we're back here on the menu. From the menu, we're going to hit the plus icon to create a new sketch. And now that we're in here, if you're modeling, you can model right here in the center of this grid. And from the center of this grid, um, you can start your model, but you don't have to. You can kind of be anywhere. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and click. Uh, we need to create a new model. So, But first, I want to open up the plus or this, this menu I showed you a minute ago. And from this menu, and by the way, I'm still learning. So there's a lot of tutorials that PolySketch team is making. So definitely watch those tutorials. I just want to give you a quick, like, quick start guide um, to get you in and start creating. So this button to create is where we're going to start. Uh, oh, look, they've even got a video you can watch here. And I want to create a new model. It's been a second since I did this. Why do I remember it being a little? Oh, because it's the other menu. I'm mixing these two menus up. Oh, this is the quick tips menu. This, the, and then this is the menu I was thinking of. I mixed these two buttons. I'm so sorry. So you got the hamburger icon, which is the one below, uh, you know, the recessed button. And then you've got the thumbstick. Okay. <laughs> got it. Now I understand why I was mixed. Here it is. The new poly shape. That's what we wanted. This is the button I was looking for. So go ahead and click on that. And now we can draw a shape. But first, I want to turn on snapping. So if I open up my menu once I've created and I'm inside of a poly shape, I can turn snapping on from the top here. And with snapping turned on, when I start drawing, I can like keep it all aligned. So let's try this out. I'm going to click here. And so you can see the snapping icon there. And I want to do, I'm making a cave. So then you press the plus icon here, the bottom button on your controller. And that's going to add another point. And so I want to make a relatively large cave. So I'm going to kind of move around in the real world to do this a little bit. And we can always add more points later too. Yeah, we'll go out this way and then this way. 
And then this isn't something that's like super duper easy right off the get go. So just know that like it does take some practice and work. Um, the reason I'm making the bottom flat is because this is going to, you know, um, not be seen by users. So I want it to be the lowest amount of vertices as possible. There we go. So this is our first kind of like floor plan almost. And um, it's not bad. At this point is where I usually turn off snapping. So if we open the menu, I'll just go ahead and turn snapping off. And then I want to extrude this surface out. And so when I put my hand in, you'll see I need to press down on the special button. So that's my index trigger, which is going to bring up the extrude tool. And then from extrude, I can bring this up. Now, if I press down on both grab triggers at the same time, I can shrink this down and create kind of like a mountain peak here, which I think I want to leave more like that. And there we go. So I want to kind of make this sort of organic structure and then carve into it to make a cave. So that's a kind of a nice looking, um, you know, mountainous shape. I can come up here and add some more lines. So if I draw from here, I can just click with my index trigger, draw to there. And what that allows me to do is go back to special for extrude and pull on this and then using both grab triggers, shrink that in. And then I've got that kind of like split top there. I could then drag across here and then do something like, uh, see this point? I can actually grab this point by holding and grabbing with my grab trigger and move this around so it doesn't look as, you know, um, <laughs> man-made. And so then I can also add a point on this line and drag that to here to split these up and then do something similar and grab this one, giving some more kind of organic look to this and kind of bringing these in. And so you can just click with your grab um, trigger to move points around and make a little bit more of an organic shape here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna dip that down more like a volcano. Kind of nice. So there's a pretty cool start. And you definitely can see how you can play with this and have a lot of fun. I really have been. Um, so that is the start to our little volcano here. Although I think what I want to do is just add another line right here and from there to there and then pull that down to create this more concave in space. Oops. Uh, click undo. So you get your undo and redo buttons there. Oh, somehow that's actually two. If I grab this, I can actually hit the delete button, uh, but that will cause this to happen. And I don't yet know how to fix this. I need to watch more tutorials. But in my to-do list for today, I wanted to leave a gap. So I'm actually going to leave this to be fixed in Blender, which is the second part of this tutorial. So we'll leave this hole here um, because sometimes that happens. And if you catch it early on, just hit undo and try some other way of going about it, right? Like you could do down, like that totally works too. But in our case, uh, I want to delete this so that we can fix it later. So pulling or clicking the X button to delete. Nice. I imagine fixing is probably as simple as like doing that and then, oops, undo. And then from there to here. Oh no, <laughs> it's getting worse. Undo. I know how to fix it in Blender. I don't know how to, oh gosh. <laughs> okay. I do know how to fix that in Blender. So it's a lot bigger hole than I anticipated. Like I said, I still need to figure out how to fix that here in PolySketch. But for now, we're still learning. Watch some tutorials. Uh, Gabe and his team are making awesome, awesome videos all the time. So next up, we want to build a cave entrance. So I'm going to go down here on this line and then click to draw. And you want to make sure it's pink. That means you're drawing on this surface. And we're going to go ahead and kind of make this a little more organic. So add a plus icon here, icon there. I'm a little nervous here with my shape. And right there. Okay, it did work. I was like, oh no, what have I done? And so I'm going to move this up. So I'm going to grab this and pull it upwards a little bit more over here and over there. And that's kind of turning into the cave like structure I was looking for. Let me bring that in a little bit. Something like that. Okay, so there is my like starting point of a cave. So now if I go to special and extrude, we're used to extruding outward, but you can actually extrude inward and we can do this. And if I grab with both grab triggers, we can actually shrink it down a little bit and create this really nice organic entrance. And then we can continue extruding that inwards. And we can also um, grab a plus symbol, right? To add a point so we can create this, oops, 
um, like tunnel. And I think I'm going to leave that there. And so that's kind of a nice looking cave. And then we can just like modify the end to have more points on it. So we can make it a little more of an organic ending. So I'm thinking to right there, from there to here, from here to there, from there to here, and then from there to there should allow me to go and grab these points one at a time using my grab trigger and build a little bit more of an organic kind of ending there. There we go. Nice. So this is our model we've built in PolySketch. And as you can imagine, this can be a lot of fun. I am not going to get into a lot of the specific details because I just want to show you like how to optimize this model next because uh, that's, you know, a good thing to learn. So we're going gonna... <laughs> to bring it into Blender, okay? <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, how can I say it without saying it? Basically, if they did open up a uh, 3D model import, you're going to need to have your model in Blender. So this is a step in the right direction if they make that change, and hopefully they do. And plus, if you're 3D modeling anywhere, whether it's Unity or whatever you're working on, um, knowing how to get your models out of PolySketch is super important. So we're going to hit the hamburger icon. And from here, we need to back out of the object. So we've done that. And now we're on the outside of the object. You can actually grab it and move it around. I grabbed the wrong button. Grab, grab it and move it around. I'm going to actually hit undo because I like where it's at. Um, and then you can also create a new object by hovering and clicking. Uh, so you can create, oh yeah, and I wanted to, actually did want to do that. I wanted to create a little flower for you here and show you how to merge two objects. So let's go and click the index trigger, click on the plus by letting go of the index trigger. And now we're creating a new object from here, which is going to be a simple flower. And I guess I'll move it afterwards. So we're going to go, and this is going to be super organic. So just extrude and thicken up to the base like that. Nice. Okay. Oh, wow. That's peculiar. Not exactly what I was going for, but cool. I'm going to move that out of the way. Um, definitely some little <laughs> obscurities. I would, I would not keep this flower normally, but for the sake of today's tutorial, I think I will. But uh, anyway, it is a good starting point. Now we're going to go ahead and click on our menu icon, back out of the object, move the object. I'm actually going to scale it down and then place it right here at the entrance of our cave. So we'll uh, scale that some more. So I'm imagining this being a pretty big cave and this being a pretty small flower. So just a nice little aesthetic touch there. Nice. Okay, now there's a way to color and paint in here, but I plan to do all my texturing inside of Blender. Um, so it's time to save the file. So we can hit save. We can also hit export scene, which exports it. And now I will see you on my computer. It's like so five in the real, and I'm so excited. You should be seeing my screen right now. And if you've connected your computer, your headset to your computer with a cable and you're on Mac OS specifically, you're gonna need Android file transfers. So you have to go install that. That's gonna allow you to get this thing to pop up. In headset, you have to make sure to allow USB device connection. There's a pop-up, you have to press it. It's in your notifications uh, center. And then on Mac specifically, you also have to approve that device's connection. On Windows, it's a little simpler. You still have to do the thing in VR where you have to hit the notification and allow USB connection. But on Windows, it's just gonna open up. You don't need Android file transfer. It just automatically allows you to copy files from your Quest headset. And inside there, you're gonna see a documents folder. And in documents, you'll find PolySketch. Then inside of PolySketch, you'll find exports, exports, and then under exports, you'll see your GLB file, uh, which is just a 3D model file. There's also a reference images folder here, which I think you can copy photos in like, like if I drag this rock texture in. Oh yeah, you totally can go the other way around. So you can bring images into PolySketch. I haven't tried that feature out yet, but it looks pretty cool. So I'll have to try that some other time with that picture. Um, in fact, was there, oh, anyway, let's <laughs> not get to sidetracked. So we're gonna take this sketch and bring it into our computer. You can also do this with SideQuest if you happen to have SideQuest installed. So over here in my Rocky Cave tutorial folder, I'm gonna create a new, um, 3D models folder. And this is where I'm gonna create a new folder called GLB, where I will drag and drop the GLB file in. And now I've got this for bringing into Blender. 
Um, I've got this little checklist over here that I'll be glancing at occasionally. Uh, if you don't have a good cable, I'm supposed to remind you that SureDrop.io exists, except I believe it only has access to photos and videos. So um, the cable does matter. So if you're not seeing your headset connected or you're having some other issues, I only have one cable that actually works for me. I have two of the exact same cable, but one of them seems to have worn down to the point where it doesn't work and I have to use that one. Um, thicker, smaller cables kind of like work better. Um, so I do have like a really short one, but then you have to like put your headset down on the computer. It's really painful in the neck. Um, but yeah, cable matters. So that's an important note. So now we're gonna go ahead and bring this into, um, into Blender. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna open up Blender and here it is. And then the first thing I do when I enter Blender, just like all of y'all probably do, is delete everything. If you never installed Blender before, go ahead and do that. Um, and then uh, if you didn't see what I just did there, I selected everything by holding shift, then right clicked, delete hierarchy, boom, it's gone. Then we go down to file, import, import a GLTF, and it's stored inside of, uh, we put that on the desktop, we put that in PolySketch, tutorials, Rocky Cave tutorial, three new models, GLB, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna import this uh, GLTF 2.0 type file. And now once it's in here, you can look at it, um, we can't really see it just yet because it's so far away. I have a trick for that. Under view, you can go to frame selected. I use the uh, forward or backslash. Yeah, so I just use the shortcut on my keyboard backslash. There it is. So there is our cave model. And we can even see our flower down there, which we'll be seeing in a second. And um, yeah, pretty neat. There it is. Uh, cool color too. And now we're going to go ahead and zoom in and we can see that little hole there. And so one of the first things we wanna do is learn how to fix these holes. So with our model selected, we can click tab on our keyboard to switch or click out, then click the model specifically, not the um, flower and model. Then we click tab, which switches us into edit mode where we can see these um, vertices. And then from here, I can select uh, three vertices or even the entire selection. I haven't done this in a minute, so let's give this a go. If I select all of these, and then hit, I believe it's F, it fills it in, but it doesn't triangulate it, so you have to do that again, but hit, uh, it is Alt F, and that triangulates it for us so that it is in triangles. I might have to do it one more time for this one. Alt F, no, that didn't work. This should have broken into triangles. Let me try that one more time. Um, Alt F, games really like triangles, so. Uh, maybe, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Let me try this. Uh, Alt F. F. No. <laughs> um, so if that fails and you have something more complicated like this one, what you can do is Control Z and then we can do one at a time. So we select this one, this one, this one, and then click F and then select this one, this one, this one, and F. And this is tedious, but it also allows you to define the triangles, which can create better lighting because the triangles determine the lighting in your game when you're implementing this model. And so, yeah. But uh, remember, triangles are the way to go, guys. <laughs> so look at that. I think we have filled it in. Nice. Okay, so the next thing we need to do after filling in any holes that we made is merge the models. Tab back into object mode. Then from object mode, we need to select all of the objects. So we shift click on both of those. And then it says click Control J or Command J uh, to merge them. So we'll go ahead and do Command J. And that didn't work. <laughs> okay, click A to select everything, then click Command J. That worked, okay. So you have to click out here, click A to select all, and then Command J to merge. Now they are merged into a single shape with one mesh, which is nice. Um, let's make sure that flower is still down there. It is, and it's in the place that we positioned it in PolySketch, nice. Okay, so at this point, it's good to like name these appropriately. So we've got kind of like our cave with flower, and then I'm gonna name that out here as well, cave with flower. And now that we've got that named cave with flower, I'm not sure how important that is, but there we go, I did it. Why? I think these are both textures, right? Yeah, so those are the textures for the flower and the cave. And I think we wanna go, this is not on the to-do list. <laughs> I'm like, just delete them. 
Um, we'll come back to that. Okay, so the next step on here is to reset the origin, which we tried to do. So we click on this, click object, and then set origin geometry to origin. And that works, but the problem is the position is off. So we click over here and then change this to zero, 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 and now it's perfect. Okay. And I don't, it's not like centered, but like it's better. So uh, if you have better advice for this, please leave it in the comments because definitely still learning myself. And, but I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so next up, we want to look at statistics. So we go up to this little double circle drop down, and there's an option here to show statistics. And you can see the vertices are 1600. Um, that's a lot for this model. And so we want to fix that. And if we go to like turn on back face colling, so on this drop down top right here, you can turn on back face colling. And what you're going to see if we zoom in is that, um, let me see, how do I reset my zoom? Zoom in. I just hit my forward slash. You can see the inside is rendered. And this is the part that you can't get to, right? Like there's the cave. This part is not accessible. So we don't want those faces to be rendered because they're kind of doubled up, is the way that PolySketch does it. Um, that might be changing in the future. Uh, we're working with uh, Gabe and his team at PolySketch to make this more horizon optimized, which is kind of fun. And I really appreciate him having interest in helping us. So thank you, Gabe and team. Okay, so now that we've got this, the next step is to merge our verts and faces. So we need to be in edit mode. We're currently in object mode. You can see that here, you can change it from here, but we're gonna hit the tab key, it's the shortcut. And then from edit mode, we want to change this to merge. So we can click A to select it, and then go to mesh, clean up, and then we have merge by distance, which is gonna kind of like do like remove any duplicates. And so if we look at our vertices here in the top left and the edges and faces and all that, watch that just drop, clean up and merge by distance, boom. Now it's down to 100 vertices, 278 edges, 188 faces, really, really nice, very, very nice. One thing you're gonna notice though is that back face colling, if we hit tab to switch back to mode, you can see has rendered a couple of the wrong sides. And so we need to redo this. We're gonna tab back into edit mode, and now we're gonna go mesh. And then from mesh, we have uh, normals, and we can recalculate the outside normals. And that has correctly done that. We'll switch back into tab to see that they're all calculated correctly. And now our normals are on the outside. And if we zoom into this, as we did before, you'll see that it becomes transparent because you can't see the inside you can only see it from the outside. So there's no extra uh, detail that we didn't need. Okay, so with that, um, we're moving on to uh, the next few steps. So we've got our material, I think that's what's up next. So we'll go down to material. Oh, we didn't do, yeah, we're gonna do material and then we'll check out UVs. And we only need one material here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this extra one, I think. And then we're gonna change this to be called rock. And then down here on base color, if we click on this, we're gonna change it to be an image texture. We're gonna open up that folder that I had, the Rocky Cave tutorial. And I have a rock texture PNG that I've been using. And if I click on that and click open image, it is needs to be seen. To, so to see it, we go up here to viewport shading. Note that there's a second viewport shading that says rendered. That uses lighting. We don't want that one. We want the one that says material preview and you'll see that it changes to this nice rocky gray. Now the problem is, if we go to our UV editing tab right up here, you're gonna see everything is centered at zero, zero, so the UVs just have not been mapped, so it's just choosing the pixel that's in the bottom left color um, to color this. Also, we can refocus this. And so what we need to do is map our UVs. Now to do that, uh, let's see what it says. <laughs> My notes are so detailed. Thank you, previous self for writing detailed notes. We need to be in the editing tab, which we are. We want to select all verts, which it looks like we have, but I'm going to hit A just to reselect them all, make sure it is selected. And then it says press U, which is going to open up our UV mapping options. You can also hit the UV drop down, and then we're going for smart UV project. So U, smart UV project. We're just going to go ahead and click OK. And, excuse me, here you can see our texture has been mapped to our model and it's done it in a very smart way, which we appreciate. So it's gonna look a pretty good. So let's go ahead and see how this looks. Uh, let's see, we're gonna switch 
back to layout mode and there you can see our Rocky Mountain. And that looks pretty good. And so you can try different textures and see what's gonna look best for your model. And um, I mean, yeah, there's, there it is. There's our, there's our cave. Now, unfortunately, our flower down here, let's see if I can get in, is also rocky flower, uh, which is probably not the intention. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, which is interesting. I can't, I don't know how to move in Blender. I'm so, oh, there it is. I'm like, I don't know actually how to move in Blender. I'm still learning. Um, it doesn't look too bad, really. But you might want to go into like UV editing and honestly, like I said, just keep them as two separate objects. But I wanted to show you how to merge in case you had multiple objects needing to merge. So you keep them as separate objects, give it its own material, whatever. <laughs> there you go. Flowers will be different. But what you can do is you can imagine taking this into Photoshop and actually painting these individual sections to be what you want. So if you knew the crater at the top, you wanted this crater at the top to be, um, let's see, can I select that? Yeah, if you wanted this section up here to be, let's, oh, this is super awesome. I've never done this before. Uh, learning with you guys, literally, and so excited to be doing it. We can then imagine painting this section to match what we'd expect the crater to look like. So we could paint this whole area a um, you know different, like darker tone or whatever. So pretty, pretty cool. Uh, anything else that I wanted to cover? Let's see. Um, you can move. Ah, so with UVs, if we select all of them, you can click on a UV coordinate, click on the move, and you can drag it around. Or you could select an entire triangle like this, and then shift to unselect, and then you can move that around. So if you wanted a different thing or a different part of the texture, you can move these triangles um, and sections. So that is how that works. You can also rotate them using the rotate tool. I'm going to just hit the command Z. You can then export it to your desired file type. So we can go and click file, export, and then whatever file you want to export it as. And my last couple notes here are just kind of like finishing up. So this is it. I'm going to actually save this Blender file to come back to later. So save as, and then I had the Rocky Cave tutorial. And then inside of here, 3D Models folder, I'm going to save this as cave.blend, click save as, nice. And maybe you'll see this wind up in that new game I'm creating. Here we are, I am running into the Lava Trials preview, and I thought I'd just quickly show you this world I'm working on. It's not out yet, um, but hope to see it soon. Name might be a work in progress, I don't know. Uh, but current name is Lava Trials. And you'll see I've been creating rocks in PolySketch. And my goal is to build this whole world using PolySketch models, um, except for one model, which I'll tell you about in a second. And unfortunately, the ground color isn't working. But you can see there's all these models. And you have to find a safe path, which I must just be getting super lucky. What the heck? Oh my gosh, this is never happens. Ah, OK. I was like, what the heck is this luck? Normally, they fall out from underneath you. Ah, like that. And, uh, but somehow I found a nice straightaway. So you just follow the rocks and try to make it to the other side. And it's kind of a work in progress. I'm not sure exactly where we're going, but it is a thing. And uh, I look forward to seeing it. Okie doke. Well, there you go, guys. That is the end. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Join us on Discord. We've got a 3D modeling section in the video Discord. Um, we've also got a Unity section if you've been working in Unity. Um, I know I have personally been working on some projects, which is what I finally wanted to end on. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Um, Vidu.com has a new page called Terrain Generator. And this is something I cover in a live stream on my personal Lake So 5 is live channel. Um, but feel free to check this out. It is for generating terrain. And if you go to youtube.com slash at Lake So 5, that's my personal channel. And I've got in the first minute of this late night coding hangout video, um, an introduction on how to use it. So feel free to check that out after this video and I will see you in Horizon. Bye!